Hi! Today I'm going to be providing some natural shade for my quails. I originally had some um, hessian bag covering it but I felt like it did provide shade but it didn't provide heat resistance. So I've got choco growing, you've probably seen it then. Um, this stuff grows lovely. So um, what I'm going to do is I've got some plastic containers which hold moisture because I have a tendency of forgetting to water these guys and I'm going to pop them down on the floor so I'm going to move them from here to there and then the goal is to have them grow up along the side of the quail cage so yeah I'm going to get into that and um, I'll show you how it looks quickly I've just made a mix um, I should have showed you as I was making it it's got um, little bits of like native mixed stuff in it and um, chicken manure and then I've just mixed it with potting mix so um, it's a really rich ratio um, basically almost equal amounts maybe probably a little bit more potting mix um, just, I'm just mixing it through as I'm putting it in so the top side won't be as rich near where I'm going to be putting the plants but as their roots develop they can go into the richer dirt. The bottom half of the pot I did put some eucalyptus mulch um, mostly because I'm going to be putting it in a pot of water so um, I don't want the dirt washing into the water it's really annoying so I'm um, Speaking of pots of water, I'm so going to find those. It's a bit of a tight fit. It's um, bending the containers, but the weight of it will hold them in place. I just need to keep a little bit of water because I'm not really good at watering them regularly. Okay, so when you're repotting, um, what I like to do is pop the pot in and see if it sits flush with the dirt. Um, if it doesn't, just take some dirt out and then try again. You want it to sit pretty level, um, so the dirt from in this pot sits about here, so it lines up with about there. Give or take, obviously. Um, when you take it out of the pot, it can, you know, lose some dirt, so be mindful of that. So when you take it out, just give it a bit of a squeeze around the base, just to loosen it up, and then make sure the bottom's quite loose. This is where the roots can get stuck in. And then just ever so gently hold it like this and then and then I hold the bottom to secure it and then pop it into its new home. Sometimes if it's too shallow I will hold it up and then add dirt. Um, it's good to hold it in place as well when you're doing this just to make sure it doesn't you know fall to one side or anything like that. I'm just going to put plain potting mix on top. I don't want it to be too rich for the plant and also I don't want the dogs going through it. They have a tendency of ripping up anything new I put in so um, I'm hoping they don't touch these. One's the, the bigger of the two. It's quite happy. Obviously because it was in a bigger pot. Had a lot more room to play. See what happens when you don't check. There's the dirt level. Let me take it out right here. And try again. And then, just like the last one, we just pop the dirt in around the outside, just to make sure it um, goes around all the edges. You don't want it to be smushed against the edge, like you want the roots to disperse pretty naturally. So, um, just make sure you pop it all around the edges, and um, sit the plant 
nice and neat in the middle. And then same thing, I'm going to put some plain dirt on top to try to stop the dogs from getting into it. It hasn't worked in the past, but you know, domestic. And there we go. Two plants repotted. I'm going to put them in their new home and um, try to start training them up this um, quail cage. And there we have it. I've dropped the um, meshing bag back down. Just um, hopefully the choco vine will grow onto the hessian bag and um, make its way up. I positioned them one on each corner. So hopefully they cover it evenly. So yeah, that's um a much better way of providing shade. I think it's more natural. It provides more bugs, so the quails will have something to eat um, as the bugs are attracted to the um, perceived shelter of the choco vine. The last vine I grew was an absolute monster. Um, so sorry I forget what I was thinking about then I love to have wine so much it was so beautiful I'll um I'll, I'll, I'll include it in the video so we can see that because it is just absolutely mesmerizing it had so many bugs and bees so many bees like it was just humming constantly you couldn't see them because the flowers were in the like foliage so um you had to really really look but when when I had to um, pull it down, it used to grow over there, right along that fence thing, and then along the side, and then it grew up along the house as well. So, um, yeah, it just had so many animals in it. So I'm hoping to see. It's a bit of an experiment for me as well. I'm going to try to. Um, control choco so anyone who's grown it before um, it's similar to pumpkin if you let it grow nuts you'll get so much food and plants and all that but um, they have a tendency of not liking being controlled so um, I'm interested to see if I can because my plan is to only have it cover the quail cage so from the bottom up and then up until the roof just there but I don't want it going over the roof too much so um, especially not onto the neighbor's fence because um, I don't want them getting annoyed because Choco can be annoying and it frustrated my partner having it grow all over the house so um, I will see if I can control it and um, see how we go and Hopefully I don't kill it in the process. Um, I gave it pretty big pots, but not spectacularly huge. The one that I had growing before, um, it actually burst through its pot and its root was as thick as my arm. It was an absolute monster and um, it was actually really hard to rip out. So these two are going to be staying in the pot. So I'm not sure if they will like that. I've never seen choco um, contained in a pot before, so um, yeah, it'll be an interesting experiment, assuming if I can keep the dogs away from it. They, um, they like to eat the um, fresh dirt, so we will see. It'll be an update video. Uh, speaking of update videos, <laughs> um, I'm going to try to incubate these myself. Um, are protective over their eggs and looking after them, but um, they're just not hatching. So I'm gonna do a second batch and see if I can incubate them. They are quite maternal though, considering. My plan is I'm gonna be popping them in this box. Um, the hay is mostly as an in, um, insulator for now. Um, when I'm a little bit more consistent, I'm going to start dating these guys so I know when they're 
you know, off and I can give up. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave them in there and, you know, spend more than a month or two, they're probably off. <laughs> so I'm just going to half cover them. And as time goes on, so in about a week or two, I'm going to give these a good mist. So um, they because they need humidity as they develop. So um, right now they don't need it too much, so um, I'll leave it like that. What I'm going to do is close the box up. That should contain the heat um, and insulate it. Then what I'm gonna do is pop a um, black towel over it. Um, black attracts the sun and should help heat this box right up. Um, I don't need it to be stupid hot, but um, I need it quite warm. So um, this should help not only insulate it, but it should um, get it warm. So at night time, I'm gonna bring this in and pop it probably on top of the snake enclosure it's quite warm on there because because of the um the heaters the heaters are always on for the snakes so um, and then through the day I'm going to bring it out here into the sun so it should get I had dirt on my face <laughs> um it should get natural heat so um right now the days aren't crazy hot so I can put it in direct sun but as summer hits um I won't need to because it'll be hot as shit anyway. So they don't they don't need to get too hot. They like it to be um, between 26 and 30 odd degrees or something. Um, anything more than 40 degrees, it's too hot and they'll just cook. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to get some more quails because I've only got two and I really want some more quails. Not just because I want to start getting a decent amount of eggs. Um, at the moment they're laying probably one every two or so days um, because I've only got my little girl and my little boy in there. So um, I want some more girls and I'd like some more boys for obviously food for the dogs. Um, they um, really enjoy the quails so I'll, I'll do that and maybe um, do some up for ourselves. I don't really see the point. It's a lot of work. Um, to you know like slaughter and process a quail but I might do that um if I can get some like, if I can get them to breed I did have an incubator but I gave it to my sister she um she's also breeding quails so um and chickens so I was um gave her the quail incubator so she can have that one but it'll be good I'm gonna see if I can do this the all natural way, especially being the off grid style. Obviously, when you're living off grid, you don't want to waste all your electricity, especially if you don't have much electricity. Like if you're running off solar or, or a generator or something, like the last thing you want to do is have something like that running constantly for a bloody chicken egg. So, I'm going to see if I can do this using a box and um, we'll see how we go. I'm going to be having to do an update video on that. And <laughs> see the um, the failures. I'll make a note of the date. I might write it on the side that I put them in, so I don't forget. Well, um, thanks for watching. I'm pretty sure that's it. I won't um be adding to this video. I don't think I get distracted really easily. Thanks. <laughs>